Good day, everyone. Welcome to the Promised End Podcast. My name is Zar. And I'm John from Oh My It's John. And today, we're going to respond to some of the comments that we've been getting in yes! our YouTube videos. It's our first reading your comments portion. And I think this is going to be something that we're going to be doing constantly, maybe after two months or after a month, since we want to connect with you guys and we want to know or respond on some of the things that you guys are sharing with us again uh, like we said before we want to know what you're thinking and to actually have a conversation with you and pardon for the dog <laughs> it's just like you know yeah <laughs> and it's not like we ran out of ideas to talk about or anything but <laughs> this is like um this makes us like real YouTubers, right? You know, like a proper YouTuber responds to his uh, viewers' comments. <laughs> yeah, there's something called like viewership, <laughs> and we would like to, you know, give back a little, <laughs> even though only a little number of people. <laughs> no, this is gonna be just a start. So, okay, um, first we're gonna uh, respond to the comments on our first ever episode or pep one looking back at Filipino MMORPGs so oh by the way we're not gonna name anyone since if we're gonna name anyone it might not be to their liking but do know <laughs> let us know in the comments if you want to be like sh uh, if you want us to give a shout out to who you are because it's no problem with us either. So, yeah. Again, this is from Pep Number One, Promise That Podcast Number One. Looking back at Philippine MMORPGs, here we talked about the previous MMORPGs that were really popular in the Philippines back then. And um, we received one comment. Yeah, it's a big deal for us. God damn, shut up, guys. <laughs> so, yeah, the comment was... So I'm going to let the one mention in the comment because I'm bitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, this comment reads, Hi, Zar. Love your podcasts. When do we get to see the faces behind the voice? Thanks. Smiley face. <laughs> smiley face. Kind <laughs> of <No>, laughing. <laughs> laughing <smiley>. face. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, two paren close parentheses. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So, um, for the face reveal, we're gonna leave it at that first. We we're not gonna have a face reveal as early as uh, our second month. We're not even on our second month yet. Not. Yeah. So we just want to talk with you guys on something, uh, a, a much deeper connection j than just revealing our handsome faces. Because seriously, um, we did the podcast. We we are doing this podcast. So even though you're working, you're on transit, you can listen to us. And at at this moment, it's better for you guys to be clean to our voices. Than uh, what we look like, because seriously, uh, you might like fall in love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Zar, uh, what do you think? Like six months, a year, or something? Yeah. Possibly, yes. Uh, we are also preparing our uh, video equipment. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, we started this podcast, but um, we don't have everything that we need just yet. So, we're still gathering uh, video equipment. 
audio better audio equipment as well and um, editing software mm -hmm. so that uh, once we start making videos once or I mean once we start uh, making actual videos that you can watch mm -hmm. it'd be of good quality you know we're not gonna give you just some shitty <laughs> shitty video that you just read to us about <laughs> yeah we 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 get hurt <laughs> no seriously but um let's see around march maybe we're gonna start incorporating some slides maybe yeah some things if, for example we're gonna talk about pokemon we're gonna show like images of uh the games or the anime we're gonna start doing that around march or april but for now, for the face reveal, that's a little tad too early. So, um, we thank you for being curious about what we look like, even though we know that you know that how we look like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a simple Google search might lead you to something. But again, um, it it's it's in the works. Rest assured that uh, one of these days we'll start making videos, uh, proper videos that um you can uh enjoy, enjoy watching. watching yeah and we need to do that because of watch time anyway <laughs> probably said podcast number two so we got like two comments on that yeah and um two or three three <laughs> actually sorry and the, that episode is named popular anime in the philippines part one and apparently one of the most popular segments of that show is when we forgot the name of that cowboyish guy from Voltus 5 and two people told us that we deeply thank you for reminding that the name is Mark Gordon. Yeah. yeah. The first comment was like, he's Mark. Wait, I don't know his Jap name. Yun yung tawag sa kanya dito sa Pilipinas. So, uh, in other words, uh, according to that guy, uh, he's called Mark here in the Philippines. And another comment said, Mark Gordon, or Ipe Mine, haha. And link some Angel Fire. <laughs> Angel Fire, that's some really <laughs> old like hosting shit. I know, right? It brings you, brings, you, uh, brings back memories, really. Yeah. Angel Fire was like, uh, when Blogspot was still a baby. Yeah. Like, and it wasn't even Blogspot back then, it was Blogger. <laughs> That's where I used to get my uh, music illegally. <laughs> but I don't know if it's still up though. Yeah, Angel, Angel Fire is still up. Uh, let's just let's not make this an Angel Fire. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so guys, th uh, thanks for the info. I know you two guys are uh, wanted to contribute to the show, and we deeply thank you for that. So, we'll try to avoid these mi mistakes in the future, but again, we're two guys trying to connect with you, and sometimes our memory will fail, and we appreciate these kinds of comments, because you make us remember things that we don't really uh, keep on the back of our heads, because, damn, Mark Gordon, Yeah, it's it so generic, and at the same time, it's so unique, it's just so... <laughs> Yeah, it's so confusing. <laughs> Steve Armstrong, you know, Bert Armstrong, and John Armstrong, they're, they're easily recognizable. They all have the same uh, last name. Last name, and it's Steve, Bert, and John is so... But Mark Gordon, man? What the fuck? <laughs> anyway, uh, according to that uh, other guy who said, it's Ipe Mine. Yeah. Ipe Mine. Mine. That's Mine. what his uh, name is in the original Japanese mm. dub. So, Ipe Mine is like a rodeo champion according to our research. We started researching. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ipe Mine is a rodeo champion. First, he was like this uh, street smart orphan kid. Then, he got invited into a, like, a rodeo house. Then, he learned how to ride horses. And, he learned to wheel the wheel. Yeah. So, the whip is actually one of the things we got right. <laughs> at, <laughs> at least. At least. <laughs> so, yeah. And Ipe or Mark had several other counterparts to, to who he is, uh, according to that uh, trope back then, yeah. that there's always this 
they call this cowboy western guy. Yeah, he there's always this a uh, cool loner, <laughs> right? Who's really a master at what he does. Mm-hmm. In this case, uh, Mark is a master of the whip and also of Horse riding right? horses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. However, um, and this sort of this archetype sort of appears in uh, so other super robot anime back in the day. Um, a notable. Um, a notable appearance would be uh, Juzo Naniwa from Combatler V. Mm-hmm. Jason. Jason Juzo. Yeah. <laughs> Here in the Philippines, he's called Jason Juzo for some <sighs> some reason. <laughs> and um, before you start correcting us, we know that Combatler V came before Volvas 5. So, uh, But we're just mentioning him because he kind of looks like Mark Gordon, mm, really. Like, seriously. <laughs> he also wears blue. Mm-hmm. And um, this time, he's a master of guns. He's a, mm. he's a gunman. He's a gunman, yeah. He's a sharpshooter. Mm. Speaking of sharpshooters, we also have Colt Wilcox from Saber Rider and the Star Sheriff. <laughs> he's also the blue one. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's it has something to do with the color blue that makes them cool. That's yeah. a cool color. So and it's the only color that's that can be associated with red, which is the uh, protagonist color. Yeah, the main character mm-hmm. basically. So they need if the main ca- character is like hot headed and unique, there needs there needs to be a archetype, which is the blue character who yeah. needs to be cool headed and level headed. So Colt Wilcox. Or in the Japanese, Bismarck. <laughs> yeah, it's called Bismarck in Japanese. He's Bill Wilcox. I don't know. Yeah. Bill is already the one of the most Western names you'll ever get. I don't know why Saber Rider changed it into Colt. Maybe <laughs> because of the gun, uh, yeah. uh, gun reference. He's also a master of guns. Mm-hmm. And um, just to describe his costume a bit, <laughs> he actually looks like um, a metal hero. Mm-hmm. He looks like Shider for... For those of you who know Shid- who who Shider is, mm. he looks like Shider, but the difference is he wears like his suit actually has a built-in cowboy hat. <laughs> if you remember that, that's so weird. <laughs> and it even has he's the actual star sheriff because <laughs> his built-in cowboy robotic hat has the sheriff star in it. <laughs> so it doesn't even hold the candle to the red guy. <laughs> Who's supposed to be the 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 actual main character? Main character. Yeah, in the in the Japanese version, Fireball, or Fireball. the race car driver mm-hmm. in Saber Rider and the Star Chefs is actually the main character. But however, when they um, localized it in the states or in the West, suddenly the British guy is the main <laughs> character. <laughs> so, so it was really weird. I think uh, I don't know. They try. They're trying to be friends with the British. I don't know. <laughs> so, or they, maybe because the red character is actually Japanese mm-hmm. in the original Japanese version of the yeah. anime. I think his name is Shinji Hikari. No, we're not joking. It's Shinji Hikari with an H. So it's Shinji of Light. Yeah, yeah it's like that. And he suddenly turned into Fireball Hikari in in Saber Rider. So. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> also, um, another notable character who's not really that similar with all of these, uh, with this archetype, but he's sort of he's sort of like that, you know. Mm. Um, uh, Edward Kramer from Diamond. Yes, it's Edward Kramer here in the Philippines, <laughs> but he's uh, Kazuyuki, like Yoshiro or something. Yeah, like, something like that. <laughs> so we don't want to. No, well, that's uh, not butcher his name. Yes. It's Kyoshiro. Yeah, yeah there you go. Kyoshiro Yuzuki. So, Kyoshiro is... <laughs> according to <laughs> Daimas, he's a French katana master. <laughs> and so many, so many nationalities there. <laughs> so, he's French. He has an afro. So, he's an afro samurai. Who's white? The original the Afro original Samurai. Afro samurai. <laughs> yeah. He has a complicated backstory. Just search for it. Apparently, he's a son of 
uh, supposedly hire to a sword school. Yeah. But before uh, uh, before uh, his father took the mantle of being the heir, he went to to France to follow his heart. <laughs> Thus, uh, Edward Kramer was born. <laughs> so he's kind of like a bitter guy, but he's really cool with uh, Richard. Yeah, with uh, Kazuya Ryuzaki. Or more... Or most- <laughs> Well known here in the Philippines as Richard. Yeah, it's Richard Hartford. <laughs> Richard Hartford. Richard Hartford. That's so white. <laughs> oh, let me segue a bit mm-hmm. here. I remember the very first episode of Daimos, right? They just uh, came from space. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Richard does this super wicked drum solo. Oh yeah, for some reason he plays the drums. He plays the drums. He's like a he he he's not only mm-hmm. a master of karate <laughs> and can pilot and the Daimo. He robot. also he's also some sort of scientist because he oh. actually came from space. He he did research for uh for the professor mm-hmm. at uh in Earth, and uh, when he got back. He played the he drums. He played the drums like it was so wicked. It was so cool. I just wanted to like that. That just came to my mind for some reason. I think um, Richard is supposed to be the ultimate cool guy archetype. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but but back to Edward Kramer just oh. for a bit. Um, he's he has an afro. He's blonde. He's blonde. And he has this uh, John Lennon glasses, like <laughs> red John Lennon glasses. He's like super cool. He looks super cool. Nobody's. Nobody isn't cool in Daimos for some reason. <laughs> Even the professor, is, for some reason, he's like this. What are you doing? Like, like a brooding professor guy who actually looks like he knows a lot of things. In Voltus Five, the professor's too old. Yeah, but uh, he was replaced by this. Uh, the brown, you remember yeah. the, that professor, the younger professor who's who's sporting the Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> uh, Beard. <laughs> yeah. he, he actually does look like Abraham Lincoln, mm-hmm. doesn't he? <laughs> For some reason, they really love Western culture. Anyway, yeah. so that those were the two comments about Mark. But we also received another comment on PP number two. And it reads, Can't wait for the period that covers you, you have to show. And all the animes from GMA during the years of 98 to 99. And correct me if I'm wrong, but did the GMA show... Volt is 5 again in 99 because its opening theme song became so popular due to Bubble Gang's and Dating the Odd. So, <laughs> let's talk about that. So, in 99, yeah, Volt is 5 was clearly uh, a product of the success of and Dating the Odd. If not, it's, it's, if not that clearly, it, it actually, what do you call this? Um... Supported the decision of uh, whoever uh, gave the suggestion to air Voltus 5 again. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, speaking of which, that thing the on is a really, really fucking funny show. Yeah. Seriously. Isko. What was it? Isko something? That guy. We don't want to butcher his name again. So. Isko Salvador. Isko Salvador, yeah. From John and Marsha. I think he's one of the writers for John and Marsha. Yes, he is. So, he's the main character posing as Brad Pitt. <laughs> Just the name, man. Brad Pitt. Accompanied by Brother Wheelie and Brother Joseph. Yeah. Brother Joseph is my favorite because he just sleeps. Yeah. And just says, Tama. <laughs> Uh, Ang Dating Don is a comedy skit within mm-hmm. Bubble Gang. Bubble Gang was, um, is a very popular uh, gag show. Mm. Starting from 95, if I remember correctly, because we transferred houses back then. Maybe it's like mm-hmm. the longest running TV show right now. It, no, it's it, Buluga. Is it, it? Oh, of course, of course. But it's again, the, it's the longest, longest running, running comedy gag show. There you go. Mm-hmm. And um, there are a lot of others, like there's Super Laugh In on. Maybe a CBN, there's what he calls it, Tropang Trumpo. Tropang Trumpo, yeah. And actually, Tropang Trumpo, here's the thing, guys. If you remember, Tropang Trumpo is actually like a progenitor to Bubble Gang. Because the cast is the same. There's Augie, there's uh, Michael V, 
the uh, in Bubble Gang they lacked Smoky Manolo to do. Yeah. But the others were uh, there's Jelly de Belen and who's that? Carmina Villaruel. So uh, Bubble Gang is really the comedy gag show in, here in the Philippines and it's still running. And even though the uh, the jokes are getting like too hip or yeah. too new, it, it's still funny. And I don't know if you're a Filipino, you, you just watch it. Yeah, and and of course, if if you live in the Philippines, <laughs> you probably saw this, saw an mm. episode of Bubble Gang already. And again, um, and dating the on is just a on, sk- on, on. Oh, I'm sorry. And dating the on is a skit. That parodies ang dating, ang dating daan. daan, and it's they they opened the show with the Voltus Five theme song mm-hmm. and ended the show as well. Yeah, with the Five. but <laughs> they make up their own re- lyrics, you know, mm-hmm. just from hearing the song. Yeah, tato ni Adami like that. Voltus Five So it's 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 a really bastardized, misheard lyric song, and. <laughs> It's, it was so funny because back then when I was in elementary and I don't know, Zar is in working. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was in high school. Get your back straight. <laughs> no, he was in high school and it was just too funny. It was. It was too funny. And I I told Zar earlier that I remember this episode when where they uh, told uh, someone asked quote unquote asks it, it's scripted of course well, what is Barry Manilow's nationality <laughs> but Pete just said he's Chinese and his name is Barry Manny and his last name is Lo <laughs> <laughs> so it's Barry Manny Lo <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you if you can find it on YouTube or if you can find any dating the ones um shows or skits on YouTube but if you can we really uh, suggest you do because there's they're so funny yeah. seriously have a taste of old comedy old comedy good the, comedy the classic comedy uh, I think um, we can talk about the old comedy uh, all these tropes and stuff not shows even the movies oh yeah okay. you know, we can make an episode oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the future, so watch out for it so, and if you read uh, <laughs> it will involve the comedy tropes uh, such as the beach scene. <laughs> There's always have to be a beach scene and the the factory fighting scene. Uh, I don't know why the co- uh, comedians or the comedy shows back then they really have uh, to have an action scene yeah. near the end. There's <laughs> always gun fighting and yeah. dancing yeah. in the beach. It's the the token dancing dance number. <laughs> Basically, um, the main characters need to go on an outing. Everybody, Everybody needs to go on an outing. Even though they're fucking poor. <laughs> like in the case of some of Andrew E's movies. They're fucking poor, but they suddenly uh, have money to go to Boracay or something. It's so funny. And for some reason, they're able to like reserve the whole place to themselves. Yeah, nobody's there. <laughs> like... They have a resort, or maybe, just maybe, because they fell in love with rich girls. Oh. It's the rich girls resort, but again, we don't know. It's a fucking large... You can run through the beach and nobody even asks, what the fuck are these guys doing? That's a popular trope. Like, mm. you always have the poor guy falling mm. in love with the rich girls. The rich girls, yeah. <laughs> and they're against the rich boys yeah. who like the rich girls, or... There's the family of the rich girl involved in drug smuggling. <laughs> it's always like that, and it's so funny. Okay, we're gonna talk about that in a later episode. Just a quick preview of of how we get our topics. Okay, so next is PP number three, PlayStation Nostalgia. Okay, let me read this one because I'm gonna remain silent as John answers this one. Because I really could care less about <laughs> this topic. We'll explain why later. <laughs> okay. Um, the comment reads, In my opinion, Monster Rancher's edge over Pokemon is that your monster would typically only live up to five years on average before it dies. 
having attachment to your monster from raising it to adulthood and fighting tons of battles together, the sight of seeing how, uh, seeing it grow frail and slow, the moment just comes out of nowhere and your assistant Holly would start the waterworks. There's going to be a funeral and sadness all around. All around. Previous save and freeze my monster for combining with another monster. Um, I never, I never experienced this with Monster Rancher because I never really got to play it because <laughs> all the monsters I got were just uh, pieces of uh, of wood. <laughs> <laughs> He's really like he really hates it. <laughs> With a passion. John, take it from here. Um, go ahead and respond because I know you know more about Monster Rancher than mm-hmm. I do. Okay. So, uh, in Monster Rancher, you get to raise monsters from CDs mm. or you get them from special uh, events in game whenever you level up or something. So, <laughs> Zai is really bitter for some reason because he only gets... He has a ton of CDs back home but he only gets three monsters from all cds it's either mochi the uh, dino or well monol monol is the how do you call this the laziest thing ever <laughs> not the laziest monster but his design is the laziest thing ever he's a block of stone in perfect rectangular fashion that's it <laughs> <laughs> and he's re- and Zar is really bitter about it because he he just it just keeps popping up. Yeah, I only get the black one, and John told me that there are actually variants. There of are this. variants of Mono uh, here. Uh, I'm gonna open up a, a thing just to <laughs> show Zar. That just makes me more bitter because I <laughs> always. Oh, I only got the black one, and I kept... This one? I kept getting the black one, but uh, Look, John told me that there's, like, this wooden one. Mm-hmm. I would have loved a wooden mono, to be honest. A scaled one. Oh, my like God. A j- there are a lot of other monos. There's a domino. What? Yes, there's uh, uh, amber mono. It's a combination of monsters. There's this Rasta thing. So, yeah, you keep getting, like, mono itself. I keep getting the black one, just just the generic one. <laughs> Your mono breed, so it sucks so bad. The the, the wooden mono is cute. The jade mono, the scaled mono is cute. And I don't know, there are a lot of monsters out there. Uh, I even got the Joker, which is like that's stupid. My favorite monster and uh, monster from Monster Rancher ever. Huh. Can you believe it? Oh, it looks like a clown. Uh, Joker, doy. Yeah. <laughs> Here, <laughs> this is not. Ah, uh, this is the Joker from uh a- another edition of Monster Hunter. So nice. Monster Rancher, sorry. So Joker is one of uh the famous ones because he's one of the enemies in the anime. Yes. So again, well, uh, uh, let's get back to the comments. So I I agree with this guy who told us that. Monster Rancher's edge over the over Pokemon is uh, about the uh, lifespan of your monster because I think I think it's a notable thing for your monsters to die and if they die they're like bye bye they don't respond it's either you get a similar one from a CD or something if you really love that monster. Or you stop using them so they won't get overworked. But again, there's a time limit. And it's sad. If Pokemon is is really good, like seriously, it's really good. And you get to bond over your monsters. Uh, especially if you name them and you use them on competitive levels. But in Monster Rancher, they just die. And having a dying pet for pet lovers out there... You know what I'm talking about. Even though it's virtual, even though it's your Tamagotchi dying, it's still sad. So, uh, this is a good comment. Thank you for, for giving out your input on our PlayStation Nostalgia episode. So, it's a really good, um, what do you call this, outtake or a view 
an angle on just how good Monster Rancher was because the series died down after the release of Monster Rancher 3 on the PS2. They don't have any more um, installments because I think it keeps getting on repetitive. It's always a uh, monster fight, an arena fight. They didn't try to go online or to go over the edge. So, or maybe the team died. I don't know. So, yeah, this is a really good uh, input. Thank you for saying that. Okay. Now I've said a lot. Maybe <laughs> you want to read <laughs> because you uh, were too bitter for Monster Hunter. <laughs> uh, let me read this one. Okay, so we received. A few comments uh, on our fourth podcast, which is a uh, popular anime in the Philippines part two. And the first comment reads, Fave Samurai X story arc. Sojira's story, and that time Himura broke his sword and he had to get a new one. And he destroys this guy and he thought he'd killed him. So, yeah. This, we have uh, two things to talk about uh, with this comment. Basically, Sejiro's story. Sejiro is uh, a member of Sushiyo's gang, the Jupan Gatana, and he is, you, you could call him like the lieutenant of the gang because he's if, like. If not one of the generals. Yeah, because he's like. Um, I he's guess. just the right hand man of Sushiyo. And he Sushiro. is the deadliest one mm-hmm. among the bunch. Seriously, he's just overpowered as fuck. And if he actually had formal training with the sword, like how Kenshin uh, was taught the Hiten Mitsurugi Ryu. He's gonna be so deadly as fuck because he actually is almost on par with Kenshin's Godspeed. Yeah. Um, Sujiro, his style is basically speed. Mm-hmm. He's so fast that he disappears. He, he, he'll disappear from your vision. Mm-hmm. And he moves so quickly. Shikuchi. Yeah, Shikuchi. And he moves so quickly that he could actually traverse walls. He could even run in the ceiling. He's that fast. Unfortunately, his sword handling is not that good. Mm-hmm. He, he was never trained to fight with swords. But, you know, if he could move that fast... You can probably it, kill a lot you of could, You could just, you know, like... You could just stab people with your sword. It doesn't matter. Because mm-hmm. he he, he vert- literally disappears in <laughs> front of you. He'd be, he'd be at your backside in a flash. So, that's why a lot of people like this character. And he also has this um, happy demeanor all the time, you know? He has this happy face. He always has his eyes, eyes closed. You know that trope. Mm-hmm. And whenever he opens his eyes, you know it's game yeah, time. Yeah, it, it's serious mode. <laughs> uh, somebody's gonna die, bitch. <laughs> oh, and yeah. Um, yeah, about Sujiro's story. Um, so, Sujiro is like this orphan kid. He was uh, adopted by his, the, his father's family. Uh, like, he his immediate family, or yes. extended family, sorry, uh... From his aunts, or whatever, and he's like bullied heavily. Whenever uh, Sojiro commits a mistake or being, I don't know, clumsy or what, stupid or whatever, and at first he he's like a normal kid who just uh, who's scared, and eventually he just smiled whenever he got beaten up because he knew that. Whenever he smiled, the people will, will get like creeped out or something because he isn't showing a regu- uh, regular response to getting beaten up. And they just drop off and he won't get clobbered a lot if he's smiling. So he he does that. Then one day, uh, I think it's at night or something, uh, Shishio, who's freshly burnt yeah. or uh, needed some uh, somewhere to escape to policemen. Yes. And because I think uh, Shishio back then is still not as uh, stable as he is when we met him on the show, uh, he hid. And apparently the place he hid is where Sojiro lives. So he decided to 
to, uh, or rather, Sojiro decided to help Shishio for a bit, uh, giving him food, fresh bandages, whatever. And Shishio is bewildered why the kid isn't afraid of him because he was known as a mass murderer. So with that, um, Shishio in response gave him a wakizashi. It's a type of a katana. Yes. And that's uh, that has been uh, Sojiro's favorite sword. So... Yeah, the wakizashi is like a short sword. Mm-hmm. And he really uses this for assassinations. Mm-hmm. If you remember when he assassinated the prime minister, Okubo, mm-hmm. um, he just, you know, God's bend That's his way <laughs> over to his carriage and once he entered he just stabbed him with mm-hmm. the wakizashi and just you know sped off <laughs> it's like like what the fuck <laughs> bye bye then yeah he <laughs> can do this uh, crazy hit and run assassinations because he's extremely fast and i guess the reason why um he took a liking to shishio is because shishio is like the first person to actually show a bit of kindness to this uh, kid. Especially since every single person in the household sort of uh, bullies an and, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah, For a kid that age and you keep being bullied or whatever, someone giving you kindness is like, oh my god, this is God. <laughs> no? so, so, so you guys exist. You, you're gonna think <laughs> like that. And he gave him a gift. Which is not really a gift because nobody gives a sword to a kid <laughs> and teaches him the only creed that he will follow, which is the strong shall live and the weak shall die. It's the law of nature. And at one point, the family members discovered Shishio and they decided to murder <laughs> Sojiro because uh, for uh, Sojiro kept uh, attending to the wanted guy and so so uh, with that with uh, that act of condemn not he wasn't that fearful for his life he was fearful for uh, Shishio's uh, welfare what he did was uh, I don't know if he found Godspeed at this moment <laughs> <laughs> or the God, the Godspeed just woke up in him but he murdered his own family. Yeah. So before he got murdered, he murdered them first. Yeah. yeah. I That's think such the, a twisted fucking thing. <laughs> the family saw it as an opportunity to get rid of him once and for all in a legitimate way because all they needed to do was tell the police that, hey, this kid was actually helping out a wanted criminal. And the criminal just killed him after. Yeah, the criminal killed him afterwards. So it was their chance to actually uh, get rid of Sajiro legally. But unfortunately, Shishio repeated his words that day. And mm. Sajiro sort of realized that with the sword, he's stronger. And, um, I don't know, that's a really twisted backstory. But uh, we saw how one creed, one person can change another person's life forever. One sweet kid who's pure enough to just smile at, at people who's uh, beating him up and just, you know, snap and kill people. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a good backstory. It's really... It's twisted yet good for a certain character to have that kind of backstory. And it is very relatable because there... I won't deny, there were moments in my life where... You know, I just wish that I was strong enough, you know? And oh. No, I'm, I'm saying there are moments <laughs> yeah. like that in everybody's, you know, in everybody's yeah. life. You get challenged. And um, that day, when, when, when you meet your adversary, you just wish that you're, you're strong mm-hmm. enough to get out of that alone. Yeah, even though, even if it's not like a person, yeah, you it, might be battling cancer or might be battling your grades, you might... And it's good that the strong shall live, but it definitely doesn't mean that the weak shall die. <laughs> because if if you're weak and you suddenly became strong, you weren't dead when you were weak. Just remember <laughs> that. Okay? That's... Let's, let's not be too, like, extremist about it. <laughs> well, 
anyway, so there's another point to this uh, comment, the one where Kenshin destroys this guy, but it's going to be a really long talk, so we're going to... Okay, uh, here's the thing, guys. We're going to give you um, Samurai X only episode. Oh, yeah. Okay. That, that's good... Samurai X deserve it, its own episode, but let's schedule that for like uh, another uh, week or so, because there are a lot of things to talk about and we would like to share you guys. So, look out for that. Keep listening, keep following, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, another comment is Kenshin actually had a name when Hiko said Seijuro took him as an apprentice. It was Shinta. Hiko felt it was too soft for a swordsman and renamed him as uh, Kenshin Himura. Um, fucking word crap. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. It was, uh, uh, later in the OVAs, if you count it as canon, Kenshin is already married to Kaoru, and he asked her to start calling him by his real name, Shinta. Yeah. Okay, so, um, we knew that Shinta was his name. Maybe the message didn't get across properly, so it was Shinta. We just, uh, maybe it was in the back of our heads or something, but what we were talking about back then was the actual Hitokiri Batusai, yeah. the actual assassin uh, from the Bakumatsu period in Japan. We don't know his name back then. But uh, when we were like researching more, and I I know I knew this, I just forgot and forgot this. It was uh, Kawakami Gensai? Yes, Kawakami Gensai. Yeah, it was Kawakami Gensai. So, Kawakami Gensai... Where the fuck is her from the Kawakami? Yeah, Kawakami Gensai is part of the uh, four Hitokiri of the Bakumatsu period. It's the Bakumatsu Shidai Hitokiri. These were four very notable assassins. They were seriously fucked up people <laughs> that were against uh, changing of the times. Yeah. Um, some of them were pro, some of them were against. These people were so skilled that people considered them unmatched mm -hmm. and that no normal person, no normal swordsman would be able to take them on. That's how notorious this four mm -hmm. uh, samurai were. And actually the word Hitokiri, Hitokiri, Hito, Hitokiri, <laughs> means manslayer, man, man cutter, and the, uh, it just literally means, uh, means that they're out to kill. Yeah. people it means lay cut whatever and these four people especially kawakami gensai were um people that uh were were so notable as assassins they killed um specific people uh specific important people that wanted to change the times specific people that wanted japan to go into another path and they just killed them so, yeah. in 1969, a film by Hideo Gosha named Hitokiri uh, was shown. And I think it's a good uh, movie to watch if you're into Samurai X as well. Yeah, I've seen a few clips of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's It has aged well. If you like so, uh, stuff like The mm -hmm. Seven Samurai, mm -hmm. stuff like that, uh, you'd like this one. Mm -hmm. And also, um, th uh, again, as we said, there were four of them. The next, uh, the, the most notable is Kawakami Gensai, in which Kenshin was based upon. Then there's uh, Kirino Toshiaki. He, I think he doesn't have a Samurai X counterpart. There's Tanaka Shinbei. Uh, he, he's, uh, he still doesn't have a Samurai X counterpart, yeah. but he's notable for committing seppuku. Instead of just giving up. He just fucking ended his life and shit. And the other most notable than uh, Kawakami Gensai is Okada Izo. Okada Izo uh, was the character, the person who was the basis for another Samurai X character. Which was Udon Jine. Udon, Udo, sorry, Udo. Udo Jine. Kurugaza Udo Jine. From Samurai X, the one with the black uh, sclera and red eyes. 
Was red? Was it red or blue? What was the sign for her? I it was. Know. I believe it was red. Red, black and red. Yeah. So, or rather, it's actually just white. Yeah, it was just white. I yeah. Think. White and pupils. The, the character be- bears little resemblance to Izu. <laughs> yeah. Because seriously, Black Sclera, that alone fucked up everything. And for in Gensai's case, in Kenshin's case, the only thing that they were they were uh, the same in is was Gensai is also a lanky person. Yeah, he's short. He's short. He is he looks like, like this normal guy's um just has a katana on his uh, side, but people didn't know that he can fucking kill. Like, if, seriously. If you look him up in Google, you see he, he looks like a kid, he to looks be honest. Like a kid. And um, we only called uh, Kenshin unnamed. We mm-hmm. only called him unnamed because in the, in the story of Samurai X or Runo Uni Kenshin, he was only known as Batosai during mm. that period, during his period as an assassin. No one knows him as Shinta or even as Kenshin, Kenshin. Himura. Yeah, it's a top level, it's a top secret. Mm. Only the highest levels of government knew who he mm. was. That's why they had to ask, the prime minister mm. had to visit him personally to employ him again. And he brought along mm. another person who knew him from that year and that was... Saito Hajime, Saito who is based on, on, a, real, on a real person. But well. he's not as handsome <laughs> as the Saito Hajime in the anime. So the anime guy is more handsome. Just look it up. We're not trying to like fuck with the dead yeah, person. We're not bashing him or anything. Yeah. But it's just that Saito, his he's he's look is like, so iconic. Yeah, you it's know? so cool. Like seriously, <laughs> what the fuck? But he, but yeah. So again, thank you for that comment. We. Um, if it, if some of our things or some of the things we say get in the, in the wrong concept, do say it uh, on the comments because we'd love to answer them back. Okay. So that's, that's it for that comment. And the last one. Oh, let me read this one. Um, we, we also had the last comment that we have for PEP number four is, Stop the puns with with show. <laughs> with show, damn it. So no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Puns is punny. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny for me. And what? It's my own brand of humor. Don't don't crash my party, bro. Yeah, it's, nah, it's okay. Um, I appreciate you saying that, but no. Let's revisit this for a bit. Um, the reason uh, for this comment is because John made uh, a, a lot joke of, a lot of during jokes. that uh, podcast when we were talking about Yu Yu Hakusho. He basically hint, uh, said that it actually became a meme, with, especially with the English ha- cast, mm-hmm. because um, they would just say Yu Yu Hakusho, like mm-hmm. show, you know? Because mm-hmm. th- that's the Japanese title. Yeah, it's like... Watch out in the next episode of Yu Yu Haku Show. <laughs> it's the Yu Yu Haku Show. Oh, Actually, man. someone messaged me on on like uh, Facebook. The guy is <laughs> like, uh, she, uh, uh, one of the girls who listened on our podcast was, yeah, it was funny for her. Oh come on! Yeah, no, seriously, <laughs> I can show you the Facebook message. The, uh, message <laughs> it was funny for her, and a lot of people might. Uh, think as it's corny or whatever but a lot of people or some people as long as there's someone who's laughing at my jokes i'm gonna keep on making them oh oh my god (laughs) (laughs) doesn't matter if it's one person if i can make just one person laugh it's okay ah Ah, there you go well let's touch on the title for a bit (laughs) yu yu haku show literally in english it means holy shit (laughs) Are we, are we saying the actual... Okay. The actual <laughs> literal meaning of Yu Yu Hakusho is the playful ghost right, white paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the shittiest <laughs> English title ever. Yeah, because uh, Yu Yu is basically a playful way of saying mm. Yurei, which mm. is ghost. And uh, 
Hakusho literally means white paper. Mm -hmm. But you can read it as uh, the ghost report. Mm -hmm. or ghost files? Ghost files or the poltergeist report. So that's it for that title. But yeah, um, it literally means the playful ghost white paper. And thank <laughs> God that they they, <laughs> they titled it, to... it differently here in the yeah. Philippines. Ghost uh, Fighter. Yeah, I, I, I like Ghost Fighter. Yeah, Ghost yeah. Fighter is like, it, it has many meaning. It's like fighting ghosts. Or he's actually the a ghost, ghost who's a fighter, fighter. Yeah. <laughs> which is which is literally what's happening. <laughs> he's like a revived person, ghost fighter, <laughs> who fights ghosts. <laughs> yeah, and Ghost Files. I think there's another show named Ghost Files. Really? Mm -hmm. We we should look this up for uh for another for yeah. another time. Yeah, we should like I, um, include I think this it's in an episode. Uh, it's a goo uh yeah, there's the ghost files. And there are a lot of ghost related shit. In uh, yeah, I think in, there's a lot of ghost related shit uh about this and we're gonna talk about that on another episode. So yeah, with that we're done with the comments, comments, comments for our first four episodes for January. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna do this again this February. If there's suddenly a more influx of comments, we're gonna start just answering them um, if they can fit in like an hour. Uh, if it gets uh, too many, we're just gonna answer one by one and not expound on it like what we're doing right now. Yeah. But uh, do note that we appreciate all the comments, all the likes, the shares that you're doing, and. We just l love it so much to connect with you guys. It, um, it's not about the money why we're doing it. It's it's a good compensation though. Yeah. But we just want to connect with you guys and talk um, talk with people on a much larger scale on what we experience or what's happening around. Again, it's, this our our show isn't just limited to anime and games. It's uh, we talk about the movie. Who's part of pop culture, which is the Power Rangers, the fifth episode. Do listen to it. And we're going to talk about more and more topics, uh, mostly movies, because I, we are also like movie buffs here. And what else? Memes. Uh, I think we're going to make an episode about the memes and tropes that were popular in 2016, like the Running Man Challenge, <laughs> or, uh, Dabbing. Dabbing, the Mannequin Challenge. The Mannequin Challenge. There are a lot. Of, we're going to talk about that as long as it's fun. And a lot of people, a lot of our listeners don't have people to talk to about these stuff mm. because yeah, they might think that it's too nerdy. But no, we're here. We'd like to talk about it. Do connect with us. Yeah, and um, just to repeat what John said earlier, we really, really, really appreciate your feedback. And do not be afraid to call us out if we make any mistakes. Uh, we would acknowledge them, of course. And um, we won't stab you <laughs> too much. <laughs> <laughs> we won't look for we won't look for your information online. Mm -hmm. we, we we won't like hire an assassin. Don't worry, <laughs> we're still human. <laughs> okay, and. If you do want to comment, just type in the comments below, or you can reach us through Facebook, The Promise End Podcast. Also, if you like what you hear and would like to hear more, and in the future would like to watch more, just click on that red subscribe button. It's very easy to to uh, what notice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's on the bottom right of this uh, video. And hit the bell as well, so you get like the uh, what do you call that notifications, notifications? Yeah. yeah, notifications because uh, YouTube is starting to get really picky right now of all the content creators. Okay. Also, smash that like button in the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can we get one million likes? <laughs> One million likes, one baby. million likes. Can we get one billion likes? No, we can get <laughs> even like ten. <laughs> just one. I mean, just, I, I'm happy we, with one. Can we get one like? One like, baby. One like. <laughs> anyway, this has been a fun episode. 
<laughs> we said that we're gonna limit it to 40 minutes, but what the fuck is 53 <laughs> right now? So yeah, we're gonna end it right here. Again, this is John from Oh My It's John. And this is Zar from Chindari Beach. Saying that... No, I don't have to say it because I just said that uh, I'm gonna reserve this joke for another time. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.